Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. This is a video I never want to make, but it is a very important video to make. Every single one of these kittens had made an impression upon me, whether big or small. Some of them I held in my light, in my hands, as they took their last breaths. Some of them died peacefully with their mamas or with their, their siblings. They will now be able to rest peacefully as one of my followers had said that hopefully you guys will be able to find your best friends in the next life. So the first one that passed was, was just before Christmas last year when I was working with another rescue. This is Chopstick. He had FIP. Um, his siblings, Sammy Sam and Puffy, <laughs> Cream Puff, they had FIP as well. One of them passed, one of them survived. They were taken from me Christmas Eve. That's pretty much when the, the final straw broke for me. And I started thinking about making my own rescue. Because if I want it done right, I have to do it myself. In rescue, it's not just about the animals, but it's about the people too. Rescuers are supposed to be an example of the goodness of people. Bye, Chopstick. So this is the first, the very first litter that was born here. We have cloud, ocean, earth, and flame. Some of you may remember them. They were Izzy's babies. I tried so hard, but it just wasn't meant to be. Sleep well, babies. Now this next litter was Mars's. So we've got Hannah and Naomi. We have Ezekiel and Samuel. Hannah and Naomi were pretty much stillborn. Ezekiel and Samuel, I had them for approximately 24 hours. They were born early. Mars was a first time mama. She didn't want to be a mama. She didn't choose this. Same with Bobby John. He's survived by Charlie, now known as Ginger. She survived. Gray's children. I tried to keep Bobby John going, but it just wasn't happening. Uh, here are um, these two babies, Lyric and Muse. We got to see Muse for almost 24 hours. Lyric was very undeveloped. I can't even look at them. Becky, Billy. Casey and Benny. Last but not least, Gyoza and Gari. An owner, an owner's cat had kittens. 
the owner didn't want to deal with kittens. So he put, or she, put four kittens in a box and put it in an alleyway last Sunday. Gyoza and Gari passed by the end of the day. Wasabi and Miso are doing fine. They were full of fleas. And the funny thing is, is that I don't want to see the individual. I don't want to get mad at them. Because that's what people have done for years and years and years. Their cat has babies. You drown the, it's where drowning the puppies or drowning the kittens comes from. Unwanted litters. And it's a normal thing to do for a very long time. But what needs to be normalized is to spay and neuter. So I wish I could find that individual and say, hey, I understand why you did what you did. And I don't think any less of you. Can I get your female spayed, please? I will pay to get her spayed. Just so this doesn't happen again. Because for all that it matters, she might have already gone back into heat and might be pregnant again. Only to go through the cycle all over again. Spaying and neuter prevents more deaths than keeping your cat inside. Because even indoor cats breed. That's what happened to Mars, to Izzy, to Possetti, to Gray. They were indoors. The property owner wanted to save the neighborhood cats because it was winter and it was cold. And I understand. I absolutely understand where she was coming from. But what is more important is to spay and neuter your cats. So, Gyoza and Gari are my last two kittens that I'm putting away. The cold season is coming and everybody's gonna wanna bring all of those cats inside. The cats will survive. If they've survived in the wind, if they've survived in the weather, they will survive. But who won't survive are their babies. So if anything that anybody learns from me is to respect a cat's autonomy, a cat wants to hunt as a cat wants to jump. Bury them. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I won't have to do this again for a long time. Thank you.